Welcome to the Augur 8 Knot meeting for this lovely February 26th. All right. So in our last Augur meeting, trying to play okay there we go so in our last uh our last meeting we talked a lot about the just the process for design and how we might go about that and in response to that lammy created the document here again i'm typing poorly And that is over here. And let me, I don't know if you have the audio to um, talk us through this. Sure. Uh, okay, so this is a document just containing the current uh, state of the website, which includes the information architecture and as I see it, the um, actions or uh, what people are meant to do on the platform. And then I also um, outlined a proposed process that we designers and everyone else could follow, as well as um, a new architecture, which would definitely be revised um, via our brainstorming sessions. Uh, so let me just quickly go to the beginning. Can we go back to the beginning? You can, I don't know. Yeah. Is it sorry? Yeah. I mean, to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm here now. Uh, okay. So I visited the website and then just wrote all of this out. I'm hoping that I've captured. So the reason I outlined it is, and, um, someone is going to, um, illustrate this because it's going to be easier to understand that way. Edith is going to do that. She's I'm not sure if she's able to join the call today. Uh, so the reason I outlined this is to ensure that um I captured everything that's on the website and this is everything I, I saw. So if there's anything missing, then um, it would be good to note that now. Uh, or if anyone goes through it later. Well, and I and think then, this is helpful for sure because I think that the, the structure sort of maps in some ways to things that we call metric models, and um, so I I think that's helpful. All right. Uh. So last week we also discussed some pain points, issues that user um, users face while using the um websites. Yes, and I only noted two. I don't know. I I think we talked about more, but I could only get two. So, um, while brainstorming again, it would be nice to also discuss some of that again. So I'll note them down. And for now, the only goal I I've um been able to note down is that we want to make user experience better. I'm hoping that when more designers would help me, um make update the notes based on um, their different perspectives. And then um, for the redesign process, I'm thinking that we've um, outlined the current information architecture. We've noted the goal of the um, redesign. I think something that's still missing in this understand phase is to understand the problems that users face. We've also started the second um, stage, which is to explore define and plan. So um, what we did last week was part of it where we were checking out or um, people were suggesting um, different places where we can get inspirations from. And during this stage also, we can create a new information architecture that we would iterate through <clears throat> until we get something that we, like, we all agree on. And then 
designers, we start actually creating designs and then we hand over to the developers. Um, from last week also, we discussed some solutions or um, things to consider for the new version of um, the website. And I noted all of that down mm -hmm. and there's still room to um, add to it. And then the final stuff here is the um, new information architecture. Um, I noted some things, questions I had here, and thank you, Kali, for responding. I'm so sorry I've not responded. I will do that during the course of the meeting. And then I had one last question. So I think I just overthought it while checking out in, in Chaos's it not instance and OSCI's instance. I was not sure if um there there are more instances because we we talked about being able to um, um making uh um ways to distinguish um between different public instances. But for now, I only know two. So if there are more, so my question is: Are there more instances? Callie's got her hand up. Go ahead, Callie. Yeah. So right now, publicly, those are the only two instances. I would, I would, honestly, be surprised if more than those two public instances come up. But I'm in talks with a lot of different people who are considering doing private and in, in instances for more like inner source or stuff that like enter like knowledge within a company but now that i think about it for more than two seconds the conversation that we had that sean and i had with greg they might end up being a use case that has another public instance as well i just don't know yeah i right now there's only two i would think for the long for the community wants to host their own or for like the academic research side, maybe there'll end up being more. But I think that's like having the very or maybe even additional title, like eight not blank. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think if uh if I, there was something in this I mean it's I think it's a minor thing, but if uh if there was a way to put a site specific logo and really it's the it's the people who are active in chaos who get them confused because they know about the eight not osci.io instance and they know about the ai.chaos.io instance so um what if what if there was a naming differential between the two one was like eight not chaos and or like chaos eight not and one was aspen um aspen eight not is it different? Is it decent? It could be an option. Sure. Yeah. I'm. I. I don't. That would be fine. That would be easy. I think that's something that we can just decide to do, Kelly. All right. Well, Lami, this this side. <laughs> Your audio is breaking up, Kelly. I'll go. All right. So, uh, so uh, thank you, Lami. This is really uh, quite thorough, and I think uh, something that we can start to work with you on what would be the next step um, for this redesign process you've kind of laid out? Uh, I think maybe going through the new information architecture and just um, noting your thoughts on it. Okay. Um, I, I, I heard Kali and uh, no sorry, Lami say that um she's not sure whether she captured all the users' pain points. Um, Sean, do you think that's all that is there? I think the the pain point that Kelly and I have kind of surfaced in the 
community of people who come to eight knot or and, and they don't have any sense of the scope of what is there with regards to data so um and that's you know the search bar implies some non infinite number of repos and that you can look at for data but it doesn't tell you how many or how they're organized or anything like that so i think finding a way for the the newcomer to sort of get a sense of the scope of data in any particular instance um would be can you um, hear me now i think I so think yes we yeah we do okay i just wanted to i would say what i've been experiencing is slightly different from that that the understanding that the data is in there or that like they can that they should be able to like search on or be able to see their projects people get that it's for some reason understanding how to use the search bar like even at the most basic level i'll get i'll get the page sent to me and they're like it's broken and i was like did you try using the search bar and they're like oh my gosh look it works great now or knowing to change page that that's that's more specifically the pain point we've been seeing. Uh, let's see. James has his hand up. Go yeah, for it. I think one user experience problem there is that, not to be too technical, but up to this moment, um, the search bar has been driven mostly by the back end. So in order to filter on options, the user has to type something in and then it'll filter what's what pattern matches and get sent back. Um, so when you first boot up the instance, it looks like, or when you first load the page, it looks like a blank, no options line with just the word ca chaos in it in some cases, or just a single repo without anything else. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm fixing right now. It'll pre-populate a lot of options. Um, so, Maybe if we, you know, I'm seeing some details below in the design document that might encourage this, but getting users to like kind of do both of the things that we're saying, like see the amount of data that's likely available, like counting the number of repos and orgs that are available, mm -hmm. um, you know, just as a design thing. And then having the search bar have meaningful uh, non-default results to choose from would probably go a long way. And like making it bigger, maybe highlighting it, page centering it, something that just kind of shows like this is a search bar. Because I also find that like going to different tabs is not as obvious. Like, like knowing what a tab does is challenging for like other applications like Grafana. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I don't know what all the tabs are on Grafana until I like go gone and played with them. And the default tab should be strong enough that it encourages me to go do that. So there's definitely a, some user patterns that we could augment to try to make it a little bit more like a steeper slope toward interesting stuff than how it is now, I guess. Yeah, I know that's what I struggled with uh, when I first started playing around with 8Knot is I just, I just didn't, I didn't know all of the things that I could click on that had really, really interesting things, um, which, which, you know, because I sent you a whole bunch of feedback about that, but that was, yeah, I think, I think that was a, a big challenge for me. So I'm not surprised that you're seeing it from other people too. And to a certain extent, like one of the problems that I'm imagining, or one of the th like patterns that I see in a lot of like built tools is that it's hard, it's hard to communicate what all the features are without just assuming that people will explore it. You know, like with Grafana or any application like that or superset, like there's not a built in tutorial level or anything. Like you have to go play with it and our job in design, in this case, I believe, in designing this again, is to find ways to encourage users to go check out different tabs and expose as much information as we can, um, like not hide it behind tabs if we can. I don't know exactly where that line gets drawn, but 
like getting them people to look around and check it out i think or like even having a little like pop-up that like points at another tab rather than just the basic tab or like using color to show off different objects make them like shimmer i don't know like i think there's a lot as, as soon as someone gets to another tab i think they get it but it's that first onboarding moment i think is kind of tricky yeah and i think too this isn't this isn't unique to eight knot right um you know you kind of made that made that point a little bit that you know there are other tools that have similar problems this is the problem with grimoire lab right like people people just don't know they don't know what to focus on to get the answers they're looking for so i think that this is a problem that we face with pretty much all of the metrics tools we have this with dev stats too in, in the cncf um, there are, there's loads of data. It's just that it's so hard to get people to the data that they're trying to find. And so the better we can have improve the interface, like we can improve our chances, but, but it's, it's a hard problem. I wonder if we could do, you know, the most obvious thing that I can imagine is, you know, what's, what would be the ideal situation? We would be standing over their shoulders saying, Hey, click on that tab. So maybe we can like, as a combination of showing how much data we have and getting people to like at least go look at other tabs we could on this on the front page be like over 40 visualizations blah 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 however many repos however many orgs and then it's like oh they have this much stuff where is it i have to go check it out i don't know yeah something as sim silly as that might be sufficient um pending something bigger if we want to do like a, a really big redesign which is actually what i would love to do um i don't know i'm fixing minor problems in a big discussion but mm -hmm. one, of, one of the things that i think callie and i heard when we talked with greg was the desire to for example if i've created a, a set of repos that i want to look at together whatever that set is one of the interfaces that folks want to see is like a listing of all of the repos in that set and some very basic information about them and so making the making the members of a set more transparent and the ability to go up and down granularity which i know is a big ask i think is desired Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Sean, I don't yeah. understand what you said. Could you explain for that? Um, so if, uh, if I have 12 repositories, uh, a group that I want to keep track of together, the way that I'll see that in 8Knot is I'll see all of the member repositories in, uh, all at once it's sort of rolled up together or um i can select them one by one every time but in either case once i have that set there's still a desire to like for that just that 12 i'd like to see summary data of them on a single page so i think there's a desire for some higher level stuff when people are looking at that that set that they created for themselves Callie, hand up. Yeah, I was just going to say on this point, I would almost want to table trying to do any more granular look than what's in the search bar until we're able to do this well, because I think it's going to make it really complicated because okay. that's already going to. And so just so that we could do it in the base case well, and then I think it'll, it'll become a lot more obvious how to split it up. Fair. Okay, well, um, that's, I think, Lammy, thanks for getting us started on this. And uh, I think for next time, let's all think about these uh, different challenges and how we might, how we might approach them uh, together. And Lammy, uh, we would welcome any kind of asynchronous uh, help on this road as well. Uh, I think, uh, Lammy, your hand is up. Go for it. 
Yes, uh, I have a question concerning a link on the websites, refresh groups and manage groups. Kali explained it, but I, I don't really understand. So if you could help shed more light on it, so I'd appreciate it. Yeah, I yeah. Like, like, go to like, uh... Oops. I can start explaining. And I don't know if you just go to the creating projects group tab, that's a good thing to point out that this has go down to the bottom or just move your cursor down to the, just the sections a little bit up. You see in going to creating project groups, there's the top. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is going to have all of the expl like the explanation about why this happens is at the bottom, but the manage groups tab and the refresh groups tab if you want to make a new user group, um, you can go to the manage group tab and then that brings you to the page to create a new user group, which also triggers collection, which I think is a lot of times the way that people use it. And then if somebody makes a new user group when they're already logged in, just because of where we're at from a technical architecture standpoint, the only way that we're able to make it to where that populates in the search graph or the search bar is if you click refresh groups. And so those are the purposes of those two um, buttons. Okay, oh. thanks. I, I just realized mm -hmm. that the problem is I'm not logged in yet. So I will sign up and oh, yeah. you know. That makes sense. That's like I said, that is a of like how to get people I think that's like those are the type of things where if people are getting stuck. And then not being able to get themselves unstuck. And so it just like stops people from using the app. I think this honestly is a pretty good example of like the pain point that users are having. And additionally, one thing I've noticed is that when you click refresh groups, and I think Don noted this as well, like there's no response that anything actually happens, which is I've tried to just go fix it with CSS, but for whatever reason, like the templating that we have, the template styling overwrites it in a way that makes it really hard to make it like do button things. So I'm going to have to approach it from another way because you click what it, it is up? doing something. What if we just had like a pop up that faded away with like groups added and then it's, and then it yeah. fades out. Yeah. That's, that's another alternative. I think that, we can put a Band-Aid on it, but I want to fix it more meaningfully. can de definitely do both. Um, but yeah, that is a known oopsie that I want to fix uh, and is not very friendly. All right. Um, so, so let's keep this conversation going. Um, and Lammy, we really appreciate your help. Um, we'll just keep, we'll just keep uh, working through this meeting to meeting. Uh, I know Gary has to run, and there's one thing I want to get to just quick. James, I don't know if you saw, um, but Gary and I have been uh, addressing some, we are stuck on like the last five feet of figuring it out. Oh, you, James responded in the thread. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw it. I'll take a look. Okay, cool. I haven't read what it is, but I'll, I'll yeah. give a big effort. Yeah, it's it's just a little more kind of auger docker synthesis knowledge than I think I could contribute. We got pretty far with just, hey, we need to set up RabbitMQ, and I, I was able to help with that. But there's like a very mm -hmm. specific, um, it seems like even a shell versus exact form issue with specifically yeah. on like max silicon. And it's like, it might just be too hairy to work out, but I probably worth giving a shot and taking a look. Yeah, for sure. Um we can try to schedule a Zoom moment offline. Yeah. Would yeah. be very happy to help with that. Okay. That'd be awesome. Yeah, because it would be good to get that covered. Callie, I don't know if you just raised your hand or if I didn't take it down earlier. <laughs> yes, I did, but I just, this okay. is uh, another point. This is not specific to the conversation you're having right now. We're done with that, I think. So, okay. Um, I just wanted to see if there's any more discussions we should have around the GitLab integration. I know that that's 
was a big topic of this group before we started talking about design stuff. And I just want to make sure that we're able to push ahead on both sides. Yeah, the um, there's a pull request Andrew opened last night that adds even more uh, functionality. So the GitLab functionality is in there. And um, I just need to uh, verify that. I, I think right now it is still the case that you have to specify each repo because they have a couple of constructions of the notion of an org that aren't as neat as GitHub's. Okay, um, that sounds good. And then I don't know in what format it will be the most helpful to put down the like pain points of being like, oh, these are the metrics that we're able to get off of GitHub and these are the ones that we're not. So I feel like the net, we've talked about this, like the, the next process is going to be, okay, which ones don't work? And is there a GitLab equivalent? <laughs> and then starting to work on the ones that we do have a GitLab equivalent for. When you say the ones, you mean queries or? Yeah, the queries, data points. Um, okay. I'm more than happy to work on that. It's, it's pretty easy for me to go through eight knot and just dot this all down. I just want to figure out what the best format for that information is. So that then we can start. I think it's just going to be like an iterative process of identifying which ones don't work. Seeing, yeah, what I just described. Do you want me to just open an issue with yeah. all of that, and then we can go? No, no, there? no. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. My, my brain. That that was just me, like thinking while, while, being on a call. I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm following. So, I understand. Yeah. If you all, alt to just putting it all into an issue. If you think of any better way of going about doing it, or any additional information you want me to jot down, um, we can do that. I think yeah. the next thing that we'll have to start thinking about with the with GitLab is because their org to repo mapping is so comp. I mean, it, it, there's so many more layers to it. And so okay. if there's anybody on this call or otherwise that uses GitLab a lot, I would love to pick your brain a little bit more of how that works and how people use GitLab. I know when we had it integrated in Augur before the the date, there were conceptual mappings of everything. That that there weren't any major open source platform concepts that were missing. They just had different names. Yeah, most of it's just different names. The yeah. only thing that I've seen structurally different is like the org to repo. It's like they have like they can yeah. have sub. It's like the Fedora one is a good example where there's like Fedora and then there's like 10 sub. Sub orgs, or yeah. The sub orgs like are where I get Fedora. confused. Yeah, and so it'd be great to know from people who actually use GitLab to know how much that's being used, how people talk or think about it. Because I think that will influence how we want to go about that pretty heavily. I agree. Now just, yeah, yeah. I agree. So I would encourage people to make asynchronous contributions to this document that uh, um, Lammy came up with because, you know, we can capture some pain points here. There was a section for them. or create a new section or create a new document, whatever works. But I think getting some ideas down asynchronously will be helpful. And uh, that's, that's a, those are the things that I had on my mind. Um, are there other agenda items that folks on the call want to uh, bring forward? Forgot to put, your agenda item here. I don't have an agenda item, but I sent you a Slack message. A couple of us are having difficulties logging into the database on that server that was having problems earlier. Okay. Let me. So we don't need to talk about it in this recorded meeting, but it's you have it in Slack. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
my first my first thought is if the IP address changed. But let me find out. Any other stuff that folks want to bring up or should we go forward to uh, think about this really outstanding design process that Lamy put forward and um, maybe bring that up, uh, start thinking about it a bit more for next time. Thanks for putting this together, Lamy. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. All right. Well, I will give you back uh, 15 minutes or yeah, 15 minutes of your life, if uh, if you would like those 15 minutes. And uh, see y'all later on. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Have a great one. Yep.